From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Bill Crosby, Dollar. Were you in bed? No. Nope. Good. Put on your coat and come on downtown. Can't it wait till morning? Nope. Want me to send somebody out to pick you up? Are you talking about an arrest? I might be, Dollar. Whatever I have to do to keep you around. I'll make it under my own steam, pal. Fifteen minutes. Room 203 City Hall, okay? I may take 16 minutes if I feel like it. And maybe you'll need longer. I want a real good story about Paul Forbes. A better one than you've told so far. Tonight... And every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Richard Porter, 480 Webster Boulevard, Providence, Rhode Island. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Shepherd matter. Swindle sheet item seven, 10 cents, one newspaper. It carried the story of Dr. Shepherd's murder and told how his life had been threatened by Paul Forbes earlier in the week. Obviously, Dr. Charles Shepherd had been lured to his death by Forbes, who had telephoned him, pretended to need a physician, waited until the victim appeared, and then shot him down. The police had an APB out for Paul Forbes. All parties concerned were notified. The deceased was survived by his mother, Mrs. Clara Shepherd of Pawtucket. Amen. Come right in, Dollar. Sit down. There were about six people in Crosby's office, among them Richard Porter, who had hired me to investigate Shepherd because of a suspicious insurance application. A uniform officer from the Harbor Patrol who had discovered Shepherd's body and two other men from Crosby's staff. I told them how I had been hired, that I didn't believe all of Shepard's story about the threat on his life. I told them about Forbes slugging me for no apparent reason. I also mentioned the insurance matter had never been satisfactorily explained. Well, it's never going to be explained as far as I can see, Dollar. Oh, I'll find an explanation, Phil. You solve your murder and I'll do what I have to do. We've got it solved. All we have to do is pick up Forbes, you know that. I don't know anything. You get huffy with me on the phone and you start talking about arrest and I don't know anything. You said that when you went to see Shepard yesterday morning, he waved a gun at you, a 32. That's right. It wasn't on his body. He knew Forbes hadn't been picked up. His life was in as much danger as ever. Why didn't he carry the gun? You know, that's a pretty good question, Phil. Yeah. What else? He allegedly went out on an emergency call tonight. No little black bag in his car. No little black bag by his body. What doctor goes out on any call without his bag? Oh, I wouldn't let that worry me so much. I'd find out if it was an emergency, or he knew who was going to meet him when he went out. I thought you might have some ideas. Have you talked to Mrs. Forbes? Of course I've talked to her. She hasn't any idea where her husband might be hiding. She's sure he killed Dr. Shepard. That servant in the house is sure. He told me about Shepard being threatened by Forbes. Shepard told you about being threatened. Forbes slugged you, slugged Mrs. Forbes. Been running around town like a madman all day. But everything you say and every way you say it, it comes out Shepard was lying. I did it on purpose. I wanted to worry you to death. Yeah. Well, every officer in this town has Forbes' description and the license of his car. We ought to get him before the night's out. He's the boy. Good luck, Phil. He was a good policeman with a lot of doubts. And he was mad about them. And that's what it generally takes to get matters straightened out. I found Kareem Streeter at the morgue, standing beside the marble slab on which a late employer had been laid. She looked pale and wan in her stiff white uniform and blue nurse's cape. Her eyes were red with tears, but no sound escaped her. Then she looked up at me once, sighed, and started out of the place. Wait. Oh, no. Well, I'd... I'd like to help you. I... Can you help him? No. No, you can't. No one can. I tried. Who did it? Well, the the police say Paul Forbes shot him. It looks that way from all they can gather. Over Mrs. Forbes? Yes. They're looking for him, I suppose? Yes. Well, you're something of a policeman, Mr. Dollar. Why aren't you out helping them or something? Please, Miss Streeter, I know we've had words. I'll answer that question you asked me earlier today. What? You asked me if I loved Dr. Shepard. Yes, Mr. Dollar, I loved him. I loved him more than my whole life. 
When she said that, and for some reason I don't know, I had a feeling that I was hearing the first bit of unembroidered truth I'd heard in two days. It didn't make me feel any better, but it did clear up something that had been in the back of my mind working its way to the front. Expense account item eight, six dollars and seventy cents. A steak, three martinis, and an order of sliced tomatoes. I finished eating at 2.30 in the morning. I really didn't want it, but I did want to sit down and do some thinking. After that, I climbed into my rented car and drove out to Dr. Shepard's office building. Expense account item nine, five dollars even. Bribe for watchman. I shouldn't be doing this, you know. Might lose my job over it. But since you're from the insurance company, I guess you're all right. I sure appreciate it. Uh, too bad about Dr. Shepard. Nice fella. Yeah, very nice. What is it you think you'll find? Police been here almost an hour ago, poking around. You know if they found anything? Oh, sure. Doctor's emergency kit. Heard him say he didn't take it with him when he went out in that last emergency. Uh-huh. Uh, well, I won't be long. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to come right in and watch you. Shepard had been a thorough man, and from all evidence, he and Miss Streeter kept and operated an efficient file system in the office. However, he had kept no medical history of his prime patient, Pauline Forbes. As a matter of fact, in checking over both the patient's files and the card files, there was no evidence to indicate that Mrs. Forbes had ever been a patient of Shepard's, which seemed strange in view of the fact that he told me he treated her for 14 months or better and ended the treatment by advising her to divorce her husband. What's more, he had never mentioned that Paul Forbes had been one of his patients. But an entry dated some two years before disclosed the fact that Dr. Shepard had examined, treated, and discharged Paul Forbes as a patient. These two developments supplied me with all of the curiosity I'd need for a while. Nurse Corrine Streeter's home address was duly noted on Dr. Shepard's phone book. Oakdale House, surprisingly enough, on Oakdale Street. Special rates for nurses. Room 205. Oh, Mr. Dollar. How do you feel? Not too good, Mr. Dollar. I only got home about 15 minutes ago. They kept me down there pretty long. Then Dr. Shepard's mother came. Do you want to come in? Yeah, thanks. It isn't much of a place, is it? I mean, I haven't straight... <laughs> well, things, things like tonight aren't easy, I know, but... Look, Miss Streeter... I wish you'd help me and tell me who Dr. Shepard was intending to marry. Marry? Oh, I had no idea. I was in the office a half an hour ago. He'd already made arrangements for a honeymoon, reservations on the Ile de France for next June. Any ideas? Please go. I can't. Look, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to help. I mean, was it Mrs. Forbes? What? Look, Miss Streeter, things are all wrong about your doctor's death, about what happened before it. It'll all come out sooner or later. Oh, I suppose it will. It's awful to say this, Mr. Dollar, but Mrs. Forbes was the only person doctors saw socially this last year, and she, of course, is married. How'd they meet? When her husband was Dr. Shepard's patient? Yes, that's right. They became quite friendly. Mrs. Forbes was never a patient, but Mr. Forbes was. Now, what can you tell me about Mr. Forbes? Well, he came to see Dr. Shepard a year or two ago and stopped coming in. I believe he requested a copy of his medical history to be sent to another doctor in Baltimore, I think it was. Uh Uh-huh. But Dr. Shepard kept right on seeing Mrs. Forbes. Yes. All right. Do you have any idea why I was called in by the insurance broker? At first, I didn't. But I I don't understand what you're trying to do. The police want Mr. Forbes. What does it all mean? It'll sicken you, Miss Tredem. Well, tell me if you know. Tell me, please. It means the wrong man was killed tonight. I was pretty sure of what I meant when I said that. And I was also pretty sure that Phil Crosby and the police department had recognized the setup. It so happened I had a head start in the way of information. And though it was six o'clock in the morning by that time, I decided to use it. Mr. Dollar. Hello, Mrs. Forbes. I'd like to come in. What is it? I should have tumbled to it right away, but your husband fit the part too well. Look here. I've been through quite enough today with the police and all out looking for Paul and Dr. Shepard being killed. Stop looking pained and tired. I'm the guy that's tired. I'm the one who was going to be the star witness when the state tried Shepard for killing your husband. What? Why not get a star witness for free? Why not make a suspicious insurance move so an investigator would be called in? An investigator who'd back up a self-defense plea for your doctor and get him off on justifiable homicide. Get out of here. Get out of here. I'll call the police. And you and the doctor sail to France in June and live happily ever after? What's the matter? Wouldn't your husband give you a divorce? Go ahead. 
You say it's that way, Mr. Dollar, and you know everything, that it must have been that way. Only it got fouled up. Your husband did shoot your boyfriend after all, just as he threatened to. Get out of here! You can't prove any of it, not one word of it! Oh, you're right about that, Mrs. Forbes. I can't prove anything, not a thing. Shepard's dead, and they want your husband for it. He threatened Shepard, and they'll get him for it, and that's that. But you have something to live with for the rest of your life. Your doctor's gone, he'll never come back. Or maybe you can just have a cup of coffee and forget all about it. Get out! Get out! Leave me alone! Leave me alone! What? Yeah, that's it, Phil. That's what was supposed to happen. Shepard had it planted all over town how Forbes had threatened his life. He had witnesses. He had me, even. All he had to do was go out and shoot Forbes any place, any time. But Forbes got him first. Can people get by with this kind of thing in our courts of law? If and when you get your hands on Paul Forbes, will he have any kind of defense? Oh, he'll get him, Dollar. The other I can't answer. What you just told me can't be proven. I don't see how a lawyer can do much for a guy who threatens another man's life and then finally guns him down, do you? But it was Forbes who was the marked man all this time. He was supposed to die. If it could be proved that Forbes was a patsy, that the doctor intended to gun him down... the judge and jury, Johnny. When we get Forbes, he'll be arraigned and indicted for first-degree murder. Don't worry about that part. The rest is up to the court, out of our hands. After all, we're pretty sure Forbes shot and killed Dr. Shepard. Hang up that phone, Dollar. You still on the wire, Johnny? Hang it up or I'll blow your head off. Paul Forbes looked the part of a fugitive. His coat was ripped in several places. The knuckles on his left hand were torn and raw. There was mud on his shoes and pant legs. His eyes told the rest of the story. He was blazing mad. He had a gun. And he wasn't afraid to use it. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow I find out how hard it is to kill a lie. Sometimes you have to kill it twice. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Thank <laughs> you.